Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The feature race at Del Mar on Saturday is the prestigious Grade 1 Hollywood Derby. We're going a mile and an eighth on the Jimmy Durante turf course. You can play this card, you can play this really nice race with a new DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com, receive a 300% deposit match. Here's the field for the Hollywood Derby. Let's meet these three-year-olds. It is a big field. It is a fun betting race. Let's start with the number four, River Boyne, Matt. This horse beat five of these common rivals most recently in the grade two Twilight Derby. Swung wide is turning into the stretch. Was simply better than those horses that day. And not only did he beat five of these, the seventh place finisher came back to win with a big buyer, I believe in 98. Yeah, he makes all the sense in the world. He's a nice horse. He's really done nothing wrong throughout the course of his career. The only real sort of non-effort on grass here in the States was that American turf, and that came over very yielding, testing turf down at Churchill. So, I, I mean, he makes all the sense in the world. He's likely to work out a good trip in this spot as well. And if he takes any sort of step forward, second off the bench for Mullins here, he's going to be a handful. We have seen some surprising wet weather in Southern California over the last few days. Does the prospect of a good turf course, let's not say yielding, let's not say soft, but a good turf course, does that work against River Boyne? Well, I don't know that I would go that far because you go back to that Pasadena, the start prior to that American turf, that came over good turf listed anyway down at Santa Anita. So I think he can handle some moisture in the ground. At the end of the day, I'd be surprised if it was an absolute bog on Saturday. A little bit of cut, I don't think it's going to be to this one's undoing. Shipping west for trainer Chad Brown is the number six Raging Bull. Four for six in his career, but an uncharacteristically dull effort in his most recent start, the grade two Hill Prince at Belmont. There wasn't a lot of pace in that race, but I didn't like the way this horse flattened out in the lane. I wonder if all good turf courses aren't created equal, and he just did not like the footing that day. It's certainly possible, and like you say, I mean, the runs two and three starts back over testing ground. One of them listed as yielding, one listed as good. He handled those no problem, and for some reason that hill prints that day at Belmont, he just didn't get over it. Uh, I also do wonder a little bit. I mean, this horse had a couple of tough runs where he needed to go and improve his mettle, and maybe he just caught up to him a little bit in that race at the beginning of October. Chad freshens him up a little bit, sends him out here. It seems like whenever Chad Brown sends horses out to Del Mar or Santa Anita, they're always well meant. They generally run well. He won this race, I believe, two years ago with Annals of Time. So I, I think Raging Bull, again, we've talked about it so many times. You see East Coast horses go west on grass. They're always a, a force to be reckoned with. And one of those East Coast-based horses, the number one have at it, was the one that defeated um, Raging Bull. Two starts back in the Hill Prince, and last time out in the Twilight Derby, I thought all things considered, he got a really nice pocket trip. He eased out, turning into the stretch. He just not could not kick with River Boyne late. This horse has a habit of drawing inside. He has a habit of working out great trips. And I don't see why another good trip isn't coming for have at it. The question is, is he good enough? Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. I thought it was an absolutely perfect trip there in that Twilight Derby. And at the end of the day, it just wasn't good enough. I would like to see him turn back. Not that a mile and an eighth he's incapable of. Obviously, he's two for three at it. But I do wonder if he's slightly better going a little bit shorter. Maybe that mile, mile and the 16th distance. He's interesting in here. He's going to be a middling price. I just don't know if he's as good as the big boys. Another horse shipping west. We've said it so many times on the stakes preview. Race of the day out of the gate everywhere on DRF TV. East Coast based turf horses seem to make hay when shipped to Southern California. That's Carrick, the ex-maiden claimer turned grade one stakes winner. He won the Secretariat two starts back. He was bet down to four to one as a three-year-old in the Joe Hirsch Turf Classic last time out, and he just did not cope with that soft ground. I'm willing to draw a line through that race. Is it possible he actually wants a little more ground than a mile and an eighth? Well, I mean, I think that's fair because, like you say, you go back to that secretariat. That was his sort of coming out party if you didn't think that the Kent was. And I thought he ran just fine in the Kent at Delaware three starts back. But it really seemed like he took his game to that next level going 10 furlongs. Now, this mile and an eighth off a little bit of a layoff and especially off of a non-effort. But, again, I agree with you. I think that had nothing more to do than with the turf course condition. It'll be interesting to see if he's ready to go with the ship cross country. The good news is he's already proven that shipping isn't going to be an issue for him. Uh, I think he's another interesting player in here in a race that I feel like you have a number of key contenders that are very comparable, very evenly matched, 
and then you've got some other horses that you need to stretch a little bit for. Let's talk about the time form U.S. pace projector because I'm not sure how the pace of this race is going to play out. Pubilia Cyrus, the number 12, was on the lead last time out. He set a very fast pace in the Twilight Derby and he paid the price. This is a horse that had really never been on the lead in the past. Maybe they just took a shot that day to make the front. I think he's better coming from off the pace. I wouldn't be surprised if they rate him. And Prince Earl, the number 13, while he has shown a little bit of speed, has never been on the lead after the first call and the blinkers are coming off. Who do you think makes the lead? Uh, I, be, I would be surprised if it's not the 12 or the 13. Now, again, you brought up the idea that Publius Cyrus, perhaps he's better coming from slightly off of it. If that's the case, there's a part of me that wonders if Phil D'Amato and everyone involved with Prince Earl, they look at it and say, you know what, this is still a very lightly raced horse, and you're right, the blinkers come off. I thought he ran okay in that let it ride. There was a little bit of contact and deep stretch, and he popped back to his left lead. That part doesn't bother me too, too much. I think his best opportunity to win this race on Saturday is to send him in a race where, like you said, there's a number of horses that share similar running styles. They usually like to be three or four lengths off of it, not come from way out of it, but also not be up on the front end. Uh, I, I kind of agree with the pace projector, but I wouldn't be surprised if the 13 was actually the one cutting out the fraction. Prince Earl certainly has a lot of upside. He's trained by D'Amato, high percentage, especially with these turf horses. Great value on the morning line at 20 to 1. As for Pubilia Cyrus, he came into this year with a big reputation. It looked like after he won the baffle going down the hill in his seasonal debut that he was going to be among the better three-year-old turf horses in Southern California. Then a long layoff, and he hasn't done much in his last two starts. Can he run anymore? Yeah, I mean, you got to be a little bit concerned. Perhaps he was one of those horses that was just a little bit more on the precocious side as a two-year-old. And even early this year, like you say, that run down the hill, it seemed encouraging enough. But boy, when you go away for so long and your two subsequent starts, they're just very blah, very dull. I, to me, it's an instance where you'd need every bit of that 30, if not more, to take him in here. California Gold Rush is a filly taking on the boys. She drew terribly. The far outside post, post 14. I love the ride that Pratt gave her last time out in the Sands Point. She must have been forced about four wide going into the first turn. There was no pace on, and Pratt said, you know something? I got to get her into the race. And on the back stretch, he hustled her into a contending position, and California Gold Rush did the rest. This filly has a lot of talent, but this is kind of a big ask against the boys from a tough outside post. You know, to be honest with you, if she had drawn better, I'd be very, very intrigued with her. But that 14 draw, I think, is going to be an absolute bear for her to overcome. I feel like the smile on an eighth is right in her wheelhouse. You know, obviously, the two most recent runs both came at nine furlongs. And that Del Mar Oaks, let's call a spade a spade, she, I, I think she probably needed one before we saw her best effort. And you brought it up, Pratt, with a brilliant ride in the Sands Point. She's been gone for a little while now. If she was more favorably drawn, I'd be very intrigued with her and would have toyed picking her. I just think this is going to be a little bit too much to overcome. Risky proposition has proven to be yet another great claim for trainer Bill Spar. Took this horse for $50,000, turned him into a stakes winner, winning the Let It Ride last time out. He got a nice pace set up, but he came with a good run, and the grinding style of that run makes me think he'll be able to sustain it another eighth of a mile. My concern is he's not going to get the same pace scenario here that he did in the Let It Ride. Yeah, I agree 100%. I look at that and say he was uh, a beneficiary of a legitimate middle pace in the race. And unfortunately, at least on paper anyway, it doesn't look like it's going to be such a spirited one in this spot. I think he's interesting. He's a nice horse that continues to improve a little bit, but I think he's going to need to up his game and he's going to need to get a little bit lucky as far as the pace is concerned. Let's talk about a couple of the also rans from the preps, the Twilight Derby, the Let It Ride, beginning with the number five, Fight On. Thought this horse had a tough trip two starts back, was placed first via disqualification. And then last time out in the Let It Ride, he got some pace. He came out. He just wasn't good enough. He's going to stretch out to a mile and an eighth. To me, that's a bit of a question mark. Yeah, certainly first time going this far, we'll find out if he actually appreciates it. He has paired up by our tops of 85. I always like to look for that kind of move, but I kind of look at it and say, if you're taking anyone out of the Let It Ride, I'm probably more intrigued with the winner. And having said that, i just not really that thrilled with the Let It Ride as a whole. Desert Stone, I've been chasing for a long time. He made it close in the Twilight Derby, galloped out well afterwards. I really like him at a mile and an eighth. He seems very comfortable at this distance, but he just seems like a one run closer that's pace and luck dependent, big bulky field. It's up to Tyler to work something out. Yeah, to be honest with you, I agree about the mile and an eighth, but I almost feel like he would also appreciate a little bit more. You get him out to a mile and a quarter, those type of distances. I like him. I think he's a nice, honest horse. He shows up and runs his race more often than not. He's another one, though. 
he had everything go his way from a pace standpoint most recently, and that helped that sort of late kick. Don't know that he's going to be so lucky this time around. I wonder if Platinum Warriors trainer John Sadler was using the Twilight Derby as merely a prep for this spot. It was his first race since the Secretariat, his first race in about two and a half months. He finished evenly. I think he can build off that effort. He ran a 92 buyer two starts back that would put him in the mix. Yeah, and he look, he is interesting if you think he needed one off that layoff, and now you're going to get a forward move in the second start off the bench. I see Drayden Van Dyke sticks around. You've always got to view that as a positive this time of year. Uh, I Look, he's not impossible in this race. He was bet down to 5-1 to one in that Twilight Derby. So clearly there was some money backing him that day. And again, if you think he's going to take that step forward, he's not without a chance. Kazan was no match for River Boyne. Two starts uh, last time out in the Twilight Derby off a two-month layoff. His prior efforts all solid, but again, like several others in this race, Race. This horse needs pace and race luck. Yeah, but you know what? Two starts back at 50 to 1, runs second and finishes just ahead of a horse that's going to be a fraction of the price in River Boyne. Uh, maybe if this one just simply needed a race and now you are going to get that step forward here, second off the bench for Callahan, I suppose you can make a case at a big price to use underneath. New York bred way early might be the longest shot on the board, but there are some angles here, I guess. Third start of the form cycle, only finished a half length behind Carrick at this distance in the Kent a few starts back. This horse is graded stakes placed. He's not just another New York bred. And if you want to say last time out, he had no chance rallying into no pace. Maybe way early's a bit dirtied up. He's a little slow on paper. Yeah, that's my concern. You know, through eight lifetime starts, it just feels like these five most recent ones, he's run relatively similar races and he just hasn't really taken a step forward from a figure standpoint. I think he's a little bit light. He is interesting at a big, big price again if you're going to use him underneath, but to me, this might be a little tough. We're saving the best for last. You've picked one of your various sons in this racing business as your top selection in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby. Let's throw up the top picks. You're going with Instilled Regard. It's his turf debut. He's got the pedigree. He's got the class in the company lines. Finally, the spot. I, to be honest with you, I've, I, so this race for me is just as much about the fact that I'm not enamored with any of the other horses that are going to be key contenders. I respect River Boyne. I respect Desert Stone. I respect Chad Brown's other horse, Raging Bull. But I kind of look at instilled regard and say, you know what, that Pennsylvania Derby, I don't know what happened, but he was terrible that day. And I'm just going to hopefully just draw a line through it. I was curious with the two turf works that he had at Belmont Park in October. And then when you go and you find the tape and you take a look and see who he was working with, he was working with Robert Bruce back on October the 21st and analyzed it on October the 26th. And he looked like he was going head and head with each one of those. We know on their best day, each of those horses are legitimate grade one caliber older horses. So um, I... I just, I don't know. It's an instance where, who knows, is this sort of a last-ditch effort where they're trying and saying maybe the wheels have fallen off and who knows that we can maybe prolong his career on turf? I, to be honest with you, I don't know. But the fact that Chad is going to send him here of all spots, you could have found somewhere else to run him. You send him here for a grade one, Flo takes them out. You brought up the pedigree. The dam was a sibling to Good Reward, who was a dual grade one winner on grass, won this race, the Hollywood Derby. I'll take a shot and give my boy one more chance. But admittedly, it's not a strong opinion. But listen, you're getting 12 to 1 on a horse who's run with the best of his crop, has the turf pedigree, and you, I think, make a very good point. If you don't like the horses in this race, River Boyne beat five of these last time out, was kind of a blanket finish. Maybe you want a new face. He is based on the East Coast. He ticks a lot of boxes. Give me numbers behind in still regard. Yeah, to me, it's a Chad exact. I went 7, 6, 4, and 8 in here. I just respect River Boyne's consistency. I like him at a mile and an eighth. He's adaptable to any kind of pace situation. I think he'll be in with a big chance turning into the stretch. I wonder if Raging Bull takes a lot of Chad money and the source drifts a little bit off the five to two morning line. I think he's fair value between three and seven to two, and I'm hoping he can do it one more time for Jeff Mullins. I'm going four one, 14 and six in the grade one Hollywood Derby. Nice card at Del Mar on Saturday. Make sure to play it with a new DRF Bets account. You will be rewarded immediately with a three hundred percent deposit match when you sign up at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Hollywood Derby, a grade one, 330 Pacific. Best of luck.